Right, I'm going to do a quick review of the new bench cap I bought. Um, it's from a company in Italy. Um, I think it was like, it's Griffo. It actually says it on the, the cast in here. And I think this is like the, the Super Griffo or something. They do two or three other versions. There's one that's got like a, a stainless steel plate here. And there's one that's got like a, almost like a, a pillar drill where it's got like the three or four arms coming down and it comes down. I, I don't know exactly what the, the minute differences are obviously than other than aesthetics for certain one of them but um, it isn't cheap um, I'll, I'll put the mention of the shop I think it was the brew shop in Manchester that I got it from there's any place that I'd seen that was selling it in the UK after seeing it on another homebrew forum I thought it's got to be worth a go they, they tout it as a microbrewery grade bench capper um, I would kind of agree with that but to an extent, there are, I feel, certain problems with it. I've seen one other person use it on uh, YouTube, a chap called Mr. Servecall, which does, uh, he does ciders. Makes a lot of cider at home. He's got like a massive bottling thing in his garden. I think he's now going commercial. He does cider, I think it's in Yorkshire that he does. And I saw him using this capper, first of all. And I saw that he had a couple of problems with it when he used it, but I kind of like, I wanted to give it a go because it just looked, you know, like a kind of, if you're going to buy one good capper and spend money on it, it's 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 the one to get kind of thing. Um, the cost of this is about, I think it was a hundred and thirty, because the company, the brew shop, give you a discount when you spend over a hundred pound anyway. Um, so it ain't cheap, but it is kind of solid. The the whole unit itself is very heavy. It weighs about ten kilos. Um, you get two heads, you get one for your normal 26mm uh, caps and this one with two lines on it which does your 29mm which can be like your champagne style bowls and even the heads are heavy, I'll weigh the other little head now it is 140 grams just for the, the head on its own so it's, like a, it's a solid bit of metal um, it's fast, it's, it is quick I bottled about 22 bottles this morning and they were all the same style of bottle as well, and I'll get onto that point in a minute. And in quick succession, I must have bottled them after filling them, like capping wise. They were done within five minutes. It was it was really quick. Um, it does feel well built, but the the only problems, which are minor, but when you compare it for someone's going to use it for a kind of commercial scale, it might cause problems to them. Uh, the first one being the base plate is kind of just a basic plastic. You know, all this is kind of cast metal that's kind of solid steel or mild steel you know all this is everything's metal this bit the guard arm is plastic which cheapens it a little bit I've seen other versions where this is a metal arm and there's an inherent problem with that arm as well which I'll cover the base plate is literally just a bit of plastic it's been glued in with like a little bit of I guess super glue at some point and that's kind of like that flakes out if you pick it out kind of thing so straight away I was a bit like oh that's a bit kind of on the cheap side but I mean it could have done with like a, a thicker bit of rubber I mean you could even make your own bit kind of cut a bit of heavy duty rubber matting out and stick that in there but it's not really a major uh, the first major I think for me was the guard arm um, I've got it set there so that it grips the neck of the bottle whereas I think normally the idea being that it's set down the bottom you line your bottle up into the, the nook where it's kind of like that shape so the bottle would go into that position and then the cap would come down squarely on it but for some reason no matter how much you try and position that center you can adjust this and, and turn the whole body when that sits in the right nook of that little black bit the head will not come down squarely on it so really kind of the arm is it's quite redundant and I think a couple of other people said that even after a while of tightening that up it, it shifts anyway so even when you're, you're whacking into it to sort of line up straight away it's shifting it's not a major issue because the, most of the normal cappers don't have that little arm anyway you just normally just position it put your cap on and you're done it's not really a problem but I kind of like it was one of the main features I thought wow if there's like a an arm there you put your bottle into the arm you're going to be it's going to get that squarely lined up but I've had it to the point where it's in the nook and then when that comes down it kind of shifts the bottle to grip it anyway 
But I just found the easiest thing was to to bring it up to actually touch the uh, the neck of the bottle rather than the bottom. Um, that's not a problem, I guess, for a microbrewery as well that use all the same style bottles. Obviously, a lot of home brewers don't. I'm I've kind of lucky enough that I know quite a few people that drink London Pride, so I'm kind of solely using London Pride bottles at the moment. Um, I've got a few odd other type ones that I keep for sending out for beer mails and that, but as I've got mainly the same bottled beer, it's okay. But the only trouble is with that, keeping the, the old style and the new style of the bottles of fillers, the head has obviously got a thick bit there, so you, you will still have to adjust that. So the kind of the arm is the first kind of gripe with the, um, the kappa. Um, the only other thing, the next thing, that hasn't been too much of a problem for me is the actual capping part. When it comes down, and I've seen it on another video, I've just unscrew this. There's a big spring in there, and then the little magnet which holds the cap. And when that bit's in the body, obviously, the spring pushes that down and allows the cap to come in. Um, it seems to be that on some bottles, it leaves a bit of a kind of a score in on the top. Um, I did a run earlier and it kind of seemed to leave no marks on it, but I've, I've had it where it's left a few marks. And I think it's all to do with the positioning of where you have the arm. If it's not, if it's too high and you're coming down quite hard on it, it can leave a little bit of indentation on it. Um, with these just being plain silver caps, it's not really too much of an issue. Uh, you don't really see it, but I see the, I think it was Mr. Servical that had blue caps and it kind of scratched some of the blue off to reveal like the silver that was underneath it, where they're obviously plated with the blue. Now, if you was a commercial brewery and you was, you know, sending them out, and each of your lids has got a, kind of a little bit of a mark on it, I don't know. It might, I think that would kind of bother you a little bit to the point that you want your products to look professional. And if this is touted as being microbrewery grade, why is it kind of scratching them? Whether or not you could kind of, I mean, it doesn't feel too rough. Like it's the reason it's causing the mark there. But the, um, I sent a message to Mr. Servical, and he said what he does was put um, like a little bit of electrical tape on it. Or I've also thought myself you could get um, like uh, the PVC gloves or the vinyl gloves like and stretch it over it so it's got like a little bit of a plastic coating on it then put it back on just so it's got like a little bit of a buffer between that and the, um, the actual bottle cap. Um, that's the only gripe with that. I mean it doesn't bother me that they're, they've got a little tiny bit of an indent but I guess if it was using green caps or a certain colour cap and it made a bit of a mark on them you wouldn't be too happy about it. Uh, the next problem I found when I opened it up was in here is where the internal spring sits. I opened it up and there was like a little bit of like rust powder coming out, and I thought, why is why is there rust in there? And I think from how it works is when that internal spring is cut in the factory, it's one long spring, and the ends are really rough. So where that spring's put up into the body, and then that is then screwed into it, it's biting into the top of the casting at the top and that was I filed them down since and got the got rid of all the burrs that were on them it must have cut into the metal a little bit and whether or not they do coat the inside or not I'm not too sure but it cut in and obviously maybe it's where it's come over from Italy on the ship a bit of the uh, the damp air in the ship or whatever's caused it to kind of not rust but it was just surface rust so what I've done was totally cleaned it out first of all I contacted the shop which were really good by the way um, the chap was willing to take it back, um, but I also said to him, did he want to check the rest of his stock? Which he did. Um, they kind of all seem to suffer from that problem, so he's going to get onto the supplier in Italy and you know notify them of that. But I would have kind of thought that you know if they'd have just polished the ends of that off and greased the or oiled it up inside, that wouldn't have happened to start with. Um, I don't think it will probably happen again now it's cleaned out. I was going to put a little bit of insulation tape just on the end of that so that when that dust grew in. I mean, I imagine most people don't actually use the 29mm cap on it, they just use it for normal bottle tops, but I kind of intended to use it for both. So unless you take it off, you wouldn't even realise that, that there's a problem there. So that's all been sorted out. Now that's that's back in, it kind of, it works as it should. That's kind of the only real issues with it. Um, Obviously, it's not the lightest thing to uh, move around, but I guess you wouldn't be moving it too too much when you're in a in an actual brewery situation. There is like a hexagon type hole here, um, which I've seen on other websites. You can get 
um, a wire twist tool, which goes in there, it's like a bit of a hexagonal shank that comes out, so that when you're, which is strange because it doesn't cork, it just caps. So you've capped a um, like champagne style bottle, but if you've corked one as well, which I've, I've, got, I've got another video coming up as well about that soon, you can cork a champagne bottle, and then when you put that on here, you can use this to hold the wire cage down, and the little cage tool will come out there, and you twist it, and it winds the cage up, so just while you're holding the cork and the cage down onto the bottle, you wind it all up, so that's why that hole's there. And, I, and there is another company that sells this type of capper, with slight variations, but I think they must all be kind of made pretty much from the same casting in Italy to have that same hexagonal shank hole where it is for this one. In terms of bottling though, as a cap art, it really does work well. You know, problems aside with the arm, I've seen a metal version, another company sells one with a metal arm. Uh, I do wonder if the positioning of that's any better, but I think it wouldn't be too hard to get someone to knock one up for these with the arm, because it's only held together with a bolt and a nut at the back, and I intend to kind of get a bit of metal, quite heavy duty metal made, with the right arc to hold a bottle in there, bent to that kind of size, and then uh, get one to fabricate one just so that it's you know it's perfect. But for now, the, pl the plastic bit does work. Um, I'll just whack a cap in now just to show you. So this is just a kind of standard uh, fillet bottle on, and it's on. It's to me, it's so much quicker than my normal bench capper. It feels like when you pull the arm down on the old cappers, they felt very kind of lightweight, like they were just going to pop off at any minute, but it is so quick. I'll, uh, I'm just going to use one of a cap, another cap that I got sent by uh, Zippy, just to see if that's it leaves any scoring on that, because those caps seem a lot thicker. So, yeah, see even on that one, I don't know if you'll quite get, but it's it's actually took a little bit of the paint off of the the cap where it comes down. But so I, I would say the head needs some work from from a professional point of view. If you're using it on microbrewery level, there's someone like Carry Brew who's going to be um, going to that kind of level soon. You might kind of have to look into how that that cap actually really does come down on there because you wouldn't want all your caps to look, you know, messy. But in all, I'm, I'm pleased with it. It makes bottling a lot faster. I can't see it breaking anytime soon, other than the minor issues that it's got. I mean, the rust one is kind of real minor. It's now been sorted. I, you know, you can, I've seen that you can get uh, spares. The spring here is a spare. You can get a magnet as a spare. The heads, obviously, the internal spring you can get as a spare. But you know, I should imagine that you could probably get most of it from you know from the actual company if, if need be. But this part and the bottom part, I couldn't see unless you actually dropped it kind of from a height on concrete. I couldn't imagine it breaking anytime soon. So hopefully that's that's all the cap I'm ever going to need now. And um, I think that's about it. If anyone's got any questions, just drop me a line and I'll uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Cheers.